First John 4, 1 through 6. I'm still looking for that. There's Jude. First John 4. There we go. Okay. I'm finally here, Brian. First John 4, 1 through 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit of God. Well, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have come out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh of God and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because who is in you is greater than he is who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, <clears throat> my last scripture was 1 John 4, 1-6. through 6. So, test now. First off, in, in, in uh, Matthew, there are wolves in sheep's clothing. I don't. I didn't say sheets. Lol. Sheep's clothing. In essence, they come looking like me and you, everyday people, like angels of light. You'll never know till you what? Test the spirit by the spirit. How do we know? How do we do this? By what? Going to His unchanging Word, the Bible. Going to his unchanging word, the Bible. The Bible says everything will be tried by fire. Everything that is not of God will, everything that is of God, will, is, that is not of God will not last. Everything that is from God, everything that is from God will last. Make sure I got that down here. And everything that is is from God will last. Who are the modern day Who are the modern day false prophets? Anyone who uses the gospel for his own glory, example. Example of names and what they do or said. First off, Peter Popoff is one of those people. He's one of those so-called uh, God said this and God said that when really his wife said something. He never, he never actually heard God's voice. He heard his wife's voice. So when you claim, because see, his wife used to go around, get prayer cards out to people, and then as soon as they got prayer cards out, what they would do is they'd collect them, and then she'd go into a secret room, He'd have an earpiece in his ear, and she'd be listening, talking to him, saying, "Yeah, this is so and so. She's got cancer. She wants to get rid of it." Do you know how many people, after going to see these types of people, ended up dying about two weeks, three weeks later because of diseases they so-called said God healed from them? No, don't get me wrong. God will will heal you. God can heal you. I agree with that totally. But. <clears throat> You gotta be. What's the word I'm looking for, Lord? You gotta be steadfast in God for that to happen. You gotta. You gotta be, what? A a not a false prophet, but a real man of God. You gotta be somebody who <clears throat> takes the Lord by His word. Every word, every jot, every tittle He says, you gotta be that kind of person. Why? Because if you're a false prophet, nothing will come out of you. And don't get me wrong. God can still use a false prophet if he wants to. There was uh, a couple of disciples in jail, and one of the disciples says, Look at this guy in the corner over here, on the other side of the other cell. Don't you see him? He's mocking God. Don't you hear what he's doing? 
And the other guy said, is what he is speaking the truth? He goes, yeah, but he's mocking God. He's doing another mockery. He goes, is it truth? Yes. Well, leave him alone. So if God's going to use a false prophet to heal somebody, then let God do it. But, <clears throat> so Peter Popoff claims that God spoke to him when actually his wife did. Two, Kreth, excuse my French for speaking this because I'm not sure how to pronounce them. Creflo Dollar. Give to God and God will give back to you. You must give $777 because God's number is seven. Bull crunch. Nowhere in scripture does it say that God will ever tell you to give a certain amount of money and dollar amounts. God will never say, you know, give $666, give $700. He, he will, but the way Creflo Dollar is doing it, he's saying that God told him specifically to tell the people to give that. No, 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 no. Wrong. God will tell you to give something and not the preacher. My uh, pastor at my church in Roseville, Michigan, that I used to attend before I moved to Ohio, uh, Bishop Jerry Piscopo, he said, he said this once. And I like how he did it and said it, too. It was kind of a combination of doing and saying. A lady came up and said, I got some anointing oil from Jerusalem. Anybody with any size offering can come and get some. Okay, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But here's the thing. What about people who can't afford to give anything right now? He grabbed that microphone. Bishop Jerry says, no. Anybody who has nothing or has something, whether you do or don't, you can come get some. She didn't look too happy about the situation. Hello, Uncle Kenny. I'll give you a wave. It's amazing you could tune in there. So, Creflo Dollar claims that God speaks to him and gives specific dollar amounts that you have to give to God. Bull crunch. Okay? If you give, yes, God will give to you if you give, but we should give and expect nothing from God because when he does give to us, when we expect nothing, then... It's more meaningful to us. And a third person that I'm going to mention name-wise and what they do is Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland actually gives thanks to Satan for the blessings God gave to him. Now, you may look at me like, well, I never heard that. There was one piece of a video and like I say if you want any of this uh, I can look it up on on YouTube just like I did before but it should still be there I'm going to download after this message every video that I'm speaking about and if you want <clears throat> video evidence of it I'll give you the video but Kenneth Copeland actually gives thanks to Satan for the blessing that God gave to him because in one of the videos that I saw, when him and Jesse Duplantis, he's another one of those false preachers, in one of the things they're doing as they're giving in the offering, you can hear underneath his breath, thank you, Satan. Now that's, that's one of those big things that you do not do, and that is what also a false prophet does. They speak under their breath, making you think they're from God when they speak under their breath false things. And, speaking that my wife is here, and the title of my message again is God Broke the Law for Love and Other False Teachings. And she's not going to like this gentleman I'm speaking about, but Mr. Uh, Stephen Furtick. Just one of those things that I'm not sure what he meant by God Broke the Law for Love. He, according, according to what I can recall from what I saw in this video, he basically said that God broke his law. God sinned. For love, which doesn't make sense at all, because God will never number one sin. God is a perfect God, and what He did on the cross was a perfect thing. It's not that He broke any laws. It's not that He did anything wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. Stephen Furtick has some stuff in there that I like, and I'm not going to entirely call him a false teacher per se. 
But I just had to mention that because how can God break any law if he's perfect? He can't. God will never break a law, not even out of love. So, just to give a few... just to name a few, claiming God sinned out of love. In his own words, and I quote, God broke the law for love. God did not did what? Yeah, right. God sent his son Jesus to die for us, not to break the law for love, but to fulfill the law. What we could not do, God finished for us out of his love. The Bible says, out of his love, Christ died for us. Whatever you do, did before, or are doing, wait, whatever you did before, believing anything you hear, wait, sorry about that, guys. My wording is kind of ran together. God finished it for us. Whatever we could do, God finished it for us. Out of his love, the Bible says, out of his love, Christ died for us, for whatever you did before. Believing every, believing anything you hear, don't believe anything you hear. Trust the Spirit by the Spirit. Everything, even me, and everything I tell you, test my Spirit and what I am speaking by the Spirit. And if I am speaking something that is heresy, then you please let me know. Hello, Stephanie. Give you a wave. But test the Spirit by the Spirit. Now, when people claim that God spoke to them and someone else did, actually, or someone says, well, God told me to tell you no, or when things like uh, God broke his law or broke the law for love. No, that's a bunch of heresy. That is something that God did not either do, speak, or tell you to do. If you would like proof of what the, the names of the names I mentioned in this message either what they said or did, email me at communitycloud222 at gmail.com. Spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D 222 at gmail.com. Now I have, and I should have proof of everything because I saw it on YouTube and I'll look it all up tonight before I end, once I end the show and then we'll get the video proof. But don't believe everything you hear out there. There are a lot of people who, like I said before, who are draining out their bank accounts, giving these people on TV, claiming God's giving to them, and not having a place to live, not having uh, food to eat. And this is this is crazy, because Reverend, uh, Reverend Tilton, Robert Tilton, one of those false preachers again. This is what he said, and I lo- don't like what he said, but I love it because it's part of this. It, it gives a great example of this message. Robert Tilton said this. He says, he says, well, Brother Bob, can't you say, because he said, God said to give a thousand bucks. He goes, Brother Bob, he goes, can't you, can't you say 25 bucks? He goes, 25 bucks. He goes, I got people on welfare giving a thousand bucks a month. Think about it. People are draining their bank accounts trying to give to these people thinking that God's going to give them give them the riches and the glory and all this other. God, ain't gonna, God will give you some stuff, yes. But not because that person out there on TV that you watch or listen to on the radio every day of the week says God told me to tell you that you need to give a specific... No, bull crunch. God will tell you what to give yourself. He'll speak to your heart. He won't speak to the heart of a pastor and have a pastor tell you. That's just a bunch of baloney. If God's going to have you do... My wife will contest this. If God has you to do something, God will tell you specifically, not somebody else to tell you. Unless you're being disobedient and you need to do something for God and then God will come to some other prophet and say, look, you know, you've been disobedient. God wants you to go over to that country of Nineveh. I want you to preach that word and you refuse to. You know, things like that. Now, if that's the case, now, if, if